Hey guys, confirm that I'm here back with a, another crypto market update. Exclusively looking at Bitcoin first. We're going to see what's going on, see how everything is reacting, and kind of give you guys a broad update on how the market is looking. So, all right, you can see we're in the Bitcoin price chart at the moment. You can see we're still in this range. We're like, you know, we're, we briefly pop out, we briefly come back down, and we get back in. You see the 15 minute ain't doing bad. We're above all the moving averages, but you know, who cares about that? Because that's really not the long-term picture we're looking at. Yep, that it was not pretty insane to look at. As you can see, still kind of ranging in here. Uh, let's get rid of this shorter one. You can see we're still on the precipice of, looks like the end of the week, something happening. Not too sure what that move will be. Uh, usually you go from the last time you smack the top, which would be over here, uh, whoops. You're gonna be looking at a uh, about twenty thousand dollar retest, or coming back down to extend the cycle outwards, which would just you know wind up moving it like this, something like that, and kind of give us a uh, a longer target down through mid November. But that's not what we're looking at right now. We're looking at this one, so we're gonna have to definitely see how that plays out. But that's something we're looking at. We go to the 15 minute we can kind of get a gauge on the next day or so you see we had that little pump up yesterday the day before uh sunday kind of give ourselves a high to a low um down to here excuse me and you can see yeah we're kind of meandering around at 382 kind of keep getting hampered down lower and lower looks like it's having a hard time looks like it'll be coming back down to that 19 to 120 region because it looks like we did not get through to 382 kind of rejecting off of that so if we were to give ourselves like kind of like a uh, a broad spectrum like this and then give our move like this looks like i have our move on the next day or so from the top recently and we're looking at around uh 19500 or back down to uh, 19144 so something worth noting so i think someone noticed this but look at us right now we're back we're back baby the dow jones let's see if i can get back to the one day is doing really well we're actually above most of our moving averages or well, we're actually above the 20 50 and getting through the 100 so we're seeing some kind of rebound through uh the dji which is good to know because you know we want to get back above this 32,000 region we're sitting here at 31 500 just about we're up about 1.34 percent we've reclaimed quite a bit from the bottom that we see just like last week and the week before um about almost 10 percent see stocks are reversing good to know that's something worth noting we're above a very critical moving average you can go over to nasdaq nasdaq as well oh good to see nasdaq as well is everything's starting to flip bullish starting to get some accumulation getting everything starting to turn around as well we are up uh if we were to go from our june low up to where we are now we are up 25 percent. that's good to see you know, because we had that sharp decline and fall. Uh, I'm sure if we were to do a high to a low here back in 2020, because this is where our fall was, we can kind of get ourselves a gauge of where we're sitting at right now. Looks like we're sitting right here. This looks like it needs to be right up there. Look at that. So looks like we need to break 62 on the NASDAQ, which is not too, too far away, but looks like we're flipping some bullishness on all these crossing the moving averages. This looks really nice. I am, it, it's, it's, it's a divergence at the moment. So if we had a look at this, we're sitting pretty neutral. So um, perhaps there are a lot of things coming out from the Fed this week. We're getting a lot of uh, CPI numbers, housing numbers, average house cost numbers. Uh, there's, it, it's crazy to say, but literally every single piece of data on the market is coming out this week by Friday. So this will be a catalyst for what is going on in the market. That is something for you to know. So we will get ourselves in a DXY. Is a DXY reversing? Ah, uh, it might be. We're having a hard time. We've had a lot of candle closes straight up here. As you can see, that kind of gives you hindrance downwards. And if we were to give ourselves a nice trend line right here, you can see from the top of that one, it is getting smacked down. Smack, smack, smack. As you can see, 
And remember, we always discuss this in the channel, a fly up to the one, a retrace back to zero, try to get through the 786. If it does not, where does it go? It always comes back to the zero. So it looks like we're getting some sort of retracement out of the dollar. This is something good to know. And as you can see, it is being hindered by the 50 day, uh, sorry, the 20 day moving average. It's getting held below it now. What we really want to see it do is fall below this 110, get caught underneath that 50 day and really have the 50 day hinder it. So, and we'll see how the British pound is doing. You can see the British pound is making some strides upwards. As you can see, we can do it from high to a low here, getting caught below the 786 for the, uh, the British pound. But um, nonetheless, good, because we can definitely throw a trend line across here. We can throw a trend line up here. You can see its move should send it, uh, let's see, back upwards uh, down the 119 region. Will that be in one candle? I do not think so. But it shows you that that will get the GDP back up into a better region where it's been, back up to around the July levels. But you can see it's being held between the 20 and the 50 day moving average. And I've been saying that uh, a lot for a lot of the altcoins. So it looks interesting that it is applying to a, you know, a currency an ad, like an actual fiat currency, but interesting to note. So we will see how it reacts to this region. looks like it'll be doing something by uh, Monday. It looks like, uh, cause this is Monday right here, but we will get ourselves over into BNB. So BNB is interesting as well. BNB is having a interesting time. It's actually doing outperforming a lot of other things. As you can see, uh, well, it wasn't outperforming, but it was doing, it's doing a little bit, ah, I can't even say a little bit better actually. I just realized is that this is sitting just barely, barely above its 20 day moving average. A lot of other cryptos are sitting between the 20 and the 50. As you can see, it only has recently done that in the last two or three days. So what do we want for, for BNB? You can see we can get it up into this region, you know, between the 170, say 277 and 274, you know, and it's having an interesting time doing that. But this trend here is showing by around November 4th, getting it up to 178, you know, in between both these moving averages, the 50 and 100 day moving average. But if it were to fail to do that, it looks like it's going down around six, one, 263. I keep saying 100, sorry about that. But as you can see, it's still doing something that it should. And you see the longer term one is kind of this kind of longer one that's coming out to around uh, November 16th through the 22nd. And you can see that that price target is showing us around $360, getting us right back to the 4236 on the short term of BNB. So, hmm. Look at XRP real quick. You see XRP really needs to hold that uh, 44 cent region. You can see it's kind of holding that trend, but uh, let's see. Yep, and it, yeah, it's just it's just consolidating. It, uh, we went up to a full target. We tried we tried to break our previous high, failed to do that. Kind of hit our head at the 1618, and are now pushing back down to support. Kind of like what I was just saying with the DXY. You know, you failed to make your second high. You kind of retrace back down to the zero see if you can find a base and find a home if you do not find a home you retrace lower to your next support which would be the moving average here about 42 cents and if not you'd go back to where you started which is around here at the 38 region so ethereum ethereum same 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 as you can see ethereum had hit my target that we had expected so let's give ourselves a better rendition of what's going on right now. So get rid of all those. As you can see, don't need this. The Ethereum was doing it a little bit early of a breakout, but as you can see, it's getting rejected off to the 1618. So it might come back down in this region, all the way down to about $1,290. But you can see it brings it out to around November 16th of a larger move happening up to around 1450. Uh, we are caught in between the 20 and the 50 day moving average. Like I said, most altcoins are right now. And uh, But interestingly enough, it is reacting more to this Fibonacci level than it is reacting to the uh, 50 day moving average. So. We are expecting that, but if we go to the 15 minute chart, we can kind of give ourselves a little bit of a target for today. See what's going on for the rest of the week. 
go like this through here, go like this through here. We give ourselves a target of the last time we smacked. Actually, I, you could do it from here too, right? Let's see. Up to around 1396, or if we do fall, we will see ourselves down to around 1290, like we were saying. Or if we're going super, super short term, like within the next day, we're looking at doing something like 1365 or 1319. But that 1369 would be present if we are holding above this trend line right here. So, like I said, something worth noting. But I think we went through most of the market, guys. 10-minute video. Hope you guys are having a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And I will see you on the next market update. Have a good one, guys.